Now, speaking of New Hampshire, our next guest says a rematch between President Biden and Donald Trump is going to actually offer the best chance in a generation for a libertarian presidential nominee. Let's bring the executive director of the Libertarian Policy Institute, Nick Sarwark. Nick, thanks so much for being with us. I want to talk about New Hampshire first. Uh, again, last night, hearing from a lot of New Hampshire pros on both the Democratic and the Republican side, saying that they see a weakness in Donald Trump there and that Nikki Haley has a shot. Um, what, what's your view? Do you think Haley does have a good chance of winning the Republican primary? From on the ground here in Manchester, I've been watching this. Um, I have a bird's eye view of it every four years. Nikki Haley is on track to have a solid second place finish behind Donald Trump because it's New England. And in New England, Trumpism is not as popular as it is in the Midwest. But the, the truth of the matter is, as you talked about in one of the earlier segments, America is built on an ideal that all men are created equal. And that idea, if you're willing to abide by that and the rule of law, you can come here and become an American. It's very inclusive and welcoming. And there's always been a counter strain in American politics of nativism and exclusion and polarization, intimidation and violence. Periodically through our history, these waves come. And that's what Trump has tapped into with a, an incredible focus. And I think the real challenge for Nikki Haley here and anywhere past here is she is unwilling to confront the lack of integrity, the hypocrisy, the fighting against the 14th Amendment, part of our Constitution that was fought over in the Civil War, that Donald Trump represents. And so I don't think she can close the deal not with the 25% of the just over 20% of Americans who still identify as Republicans, but with the 49% of Americans who believe in integrity and values and the rule of law, her promise to pardon Donald Trump, I think, is a non-starter for voters like that. And, and so, Nick, let, let me ask you about opportunities for the libertarian Party. You believe that a matchup between Donald Trump and Joe Biden offers the Libertarian Party the best chance, the nominee the best chance uh, in, in over a generation. I am curious, uh, how many disaffected Republicans have you heard from over the past several years that, uh, and I, I've been saying this for 20 years, when Republicans are in the White House, they spend more money than Democrats uh, for for small government conservatives, libertarians like you, that may not be saying much, but you looked at, look at deficits and debt under George Bush, uh, they exploded to record heights. And then you look at Donald Trump, who promised to balance a budget, pay down the debt, pay off the debt. It was preposterous. The biggest deficits in U.S. history, the biggest national debt in U.S. history, and Donald Trump over four years, over four years, added to the national debt more than every American president from our founding to like 2004. So, so tell me, uh, what is the opportunity to take Republican votes away from a party that, that spends, as I say, like drunken socialists when they're in power and when they run Washington and get them to vote libertarian? The, the opportunity comes from basically 50 years of work that the party's been doing, over 50 years of work, to be on every American's ballot. We've been on the ballot um, in 2016 and 2020 in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. And at this point, Donald Trump has driven out of the Republican Party the kind of pro-business, pro-market, pro-gay rights, pro-immigration pluralistic, middle-of-the-road, normal American who just wants to build a good life and a good company and wants lower taxes and smarter government spending on things we agree on, they don't have a place to go right now. And going into what is going to be a rematch between two previous presidents in recent memory, both of whom have high negatives, the opportunity for a candidate who's on all 50 state ballots who has a pro-human, pro-American, unifying message is huge. Um, and I look at Mark Cuban, 
and some of the stuff he's done recently on DEI and solving a part of the healthcare crisis with his cost plus drugs. And someone like that, if they wanted to enter into this arena, would have an incredible chance in 2024. Although it does seem like he's more interested in Texas than the national scene right now. Yeah, that, that would uh, be absolutely fascinating. Let, let's uh, have you come back and talk about that uh, some more. Executive Director of the Libertarian Policy Institute, Nick Sarwart, thank you so much for being with us. It's great to see you again. Thank you.